I am very happy that a very, very topical, a very relevant and very important theme has been chosen for today's uh, seminar. The theme that uh, whether global financial crisis is a reality or myth, from all the evidence that is available today, it is now clear that it is very much a reality because uh, people are losing jobs, investments have stopped, and all indicators in the economy, be it construction, be it uh, tourism-related activities, be it uh, <coughs> new ventures, be it uh, new uh, initiatives, all that has come more or less to a standstill, not only in Hyderabad, but all over India, more or less all over the globe. Now, <coughs> the challenge in such a scenario is to find out opportunities because uh, many times it is said that the real wisdom is not to give in or give up before any such uh, threat, but to see it as an opportunity and find new ways of coming out of this problem. And uh, <coughs> that is why I feel that uh, such a discussion today in which uh, people from different, from different sectors, from different backgrounds will be able to give ideas on what can be done now to come out of this financial crisis. And we have an example before us. About a decade ago, there was a limited crisis in some of the Asian countries, particularly Thailand and Malaysia, to some extent in Korea and also in Japan. And we all know that in a period of 10 years, or in, in fact much before that, most of these economies have revived. These economies are now some of the leading global economies. So <clears throat> while these kind of challenges happen, these kind of crises take, take place, there is also a possibility of coming out and coming out even stronger if the right strategies and approaches are followed. And I am sure that in the seminar throughout the day, many speakers will give ideas on what are the possibilities of uh, coming out of this crisis. I myself, when I will be speaking in the afternoon, will be explaining how the tourism sector has been affected and what here in Andhra Pradesh we particularly are doing and a few initiatives that the government of India has introduced to help our uh, tourism sector cont continue to contribute significantly to the economy. And I myself will be very keen to listen to the other speakers about their ideas, their suggestions. And I'm sure that it will be a very rich uh, discussion that we will have today. So I look forward to the rest of the seminar and would like to thank uh, Dr. Azim for inviting me today. Thank you very much. It gives me immense pleasure to be with you all in connection with this one day national seminar on global financial crisis, reality or myth. Just now we heard to our young IAS officer, Jayesh Ranjan, that it's not the myth, but it is the reality. It will be engulfing us like a, a big tsunami. Indeed, it is a great privilege to meet you all and express my views on today's topic. The seminar on global financial crisis is a contemporary and a relevant topic of everybody's interest. The seminar aims at discussing the recent financial meltdown and its impact on various sectors of global economy in general and Indian economy in particular. I congratulate the management and commerce of Maulana Abdul Kalam National University for selecting such an important topic for this national seminar. I hope you are all comfortable at and enjoying the hospitality of Maulana Abdul Kalam University. It is known for its well-established standards and reputation. Before we go ahead we into the deeper sides of this tsunami, I would like to highlight what is the current scenario all over the world. The United Kingdom will face a 2.8% negative growth rate in 2009. All over the world, not only the developing economies, even the developed economies have been affected with this worst tsunami. <coughs> Spain, unemployment has reached 14% and the government is offering a golden shake hand to recent immigrants to leave the country. Ireland is known for an example for its economic development and it has also given various job cuts. In the United States, Dow Jones index, it is a very popular share index, has slipped down to 8,000 points on the first day of 
Obama is assuming as the president of the America. And there is a very, very downslide in the automobile industry. Many companies have declared bankrupt and particularly they have been resorting for job cuts. It is learnt that around 72,000 jo 72, jobs were removed from automobile industry. The California unemployment rate has stood around 10 percent. And in Canada, about 34,000 people were removed from the jobs. And like that, the projections indicated in the current financial year, that is 2009, will be almost negative all over the world, but for some of the developing countries. The, stand, the standard line in that when the United States sneezes, the entire world catches the wild fear because the tsunami has started in the United States on account of the bursting of, uh, particularly the booming effect in the housing sector. Now, this tsunami has started, how this global crisis has started. Initially, referred to the media as the credit crunch when the credit crunch will occur, when the pressure for payment does not meet by the companies and the banks, the credit crunch will emerge. That is leading for your financial crisis. The credit crisis began in July 2007, and it has lost the confidence of many investors, and it has become securitization of mortgages. Apart from this, it has led for liquidity crisis, and particularly, the United States Federal Reserve has gone for variety of economic measures. The crisis deepened as the stock market worldwide crashed and entered into a period of high volatility. Even in the Indian capital market, the Bombay Sensex, it was around 21,000 and above, has come down to 9,000. You can assume that almost more than half of the capitalization of Indian corporate sector has gone down. And like that, the many investors have lost heavily and it is sunk in the capital as well as the net worth of the investors and the corporate sector. Although the American household collapse is often cited as the hiving cause for the crisis, the finance system was vulnerable because of intricate and highly leveraged financial contracts and operations. A U.S. monetary policy making the cost of credit negligible, therefore, the encouraging such high level of leverage. Particularly, you might have heard that the credit card or plastic money management in America has led for financial crisis. Without having their paying capacity, people were borrowing heavily, and once they have lost the jobs, they are unable to pay the debts, and it has become a credit crisis. Apart from this, we might have heard various problems like the housing crisis in America. This is known as the subprime lending operations and problems. A house property was sold for one single individual when he is being an employee of a company, and that was created into variety of derivatives, and single house mortgages were developed, and lots of loans were created without verifying whether the party can pay the installments regularly or not. When the person was removed from the services due to slowdown of economy, the entire collateral securities have gone with the wind and the credit crunch has become a problem there. The crisis in banking sector and credit in the United States had global reach, affecting a wide range of financial and economic activities and institutions, including the overall tightening, tightening of the credit with financial institutions, making both corporate and consumer credit harder to get. Financial markets, particularly stock exchanges and derivative instruments, experienced a steep decline in their values. Liquidity problems in equity funds and hedge funds. Devaluation of these assets underpinning insurance contracts and pension funds, leading to concern, concerns about the ability of these instruments to meet future obligations. Increase in public debt, public finance due to the provisions of the public funds to the finance and other affected industries and devaluation of some of the currencies, particularly you know well that Iceland government went into bankruptcy. The Prime Minister of Iceland has resigned and a new Prime Minister was appointed. 
like that many countries in Eastern Europe and Latin America have been facing the chronic financial crisis due to the global meltdown. What is the root cause for this financial crisis? Where this financial crisis has emerged? Everybody was looking at underdeveloped countries or developing countries, but it is not a reality, but it has originated from America itself. Everybody, everybody was looking at American economy, thinking that it is a developed economy. It will lead a financial leadership and it will provide a guidance to everybody. But actual crisis has started from America due to the collapse of American housing industry. The root cause of the financial crisis was the collapse of 20 trillion bubble in the US housing market. You can imagine. 20 trillion housing market was collapsed and that has given rise to our financial crisis. In August 2002, the Dean Baker was the first economist to point out there was housing bubble in the US. Basing on his analysis that your US government house prices data from 1953 to 1995, he has collected almost a century data on housing finances and housing values, etc. The study reveals that there is no real increase in the housing values, but it is only an artificial scarcity and artificial bubble in the housing finances. And on account of that only, the problem is created. And it was also proved by Robert Schiller in his research that he has also pointed out whatever the baker has suggested is valid, and it is only on account of this housing bubble when it is burst, the total financial crisis size erupted, erupted. And what are its effects on account of this housing bubble? One of the first vit victims on account of this housing bubble collapse was Northern Rock of British Bank. It was went into liquidation. The government of Great Britain is financial its requirement, since then it has percolated to various other banks, etc. Initially, the companies affected were those directly involved in the home construction and mortgage lending, such as Northern Rock and Countrywide Financials. Apart from this, Bear Steens, it is one of the leading finances of the housing, it has went into liquidation. And uh, Indy Mac Bank and uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, which were taken over by the American government, by offering around $50 billion of package. Apart from this, variety of packages were also offered by the American government to overcome these problems, but such, pro such offers, such packages have never helped the banking sector. The problem with the economy is the loss of close to $6 trillion in housing wealth and even larger amount of stock wealth. There are two multiple causes. One is around 20 trillion loss of housing wealth and stock market decline in the values. Other firms that came under the pressure including Washington Mutual, the largest saving and loan association in the United States and the remaining large investment firms like Morgan Stanley and Goldman Sachs which went into liquidation. What types of financial crisis will uh, generally observe when the global meltdown occurs. Basically, these financial crises were classified into following categories. One is banking crisis. They have been facing liquidity crunch, unable to pay the money withdrawn by the depositors, unable to ma manage the cash flows by the banks. That's why it has become bank runs and bank crisis. Speculative bubble among, among various stock exchanges. There was heavy speculation in the stock exchanges, assuming that the values will go up. And many people were investing heavily, assuming that the derivatives and various financial assets will add up more value. When there was a bust in the bubble of the housing finances, naturally that is reflected to the capital market and the speculative tendencies have come down abnormally well and further, the financial institutions which were investing heavily among developing countries have withdrawn at one stop to meet their financial problems. 
the developing economies, capital markets, as well as developed economies, capital markets have crashed a lot, and that has given another dimension to the problem. International financial crisis was the major problem here, and the wider economic crisis all over the world. It is really said that a small change in the U.S. economic conditions, a small change in the NASDAQ will directly reflect all over the global markets. That has occurred really in all over the world. And uh, still people are feeling that India has not yet received the actual problem of these economic meltdowns. We are still on the way to get it. 2009 is considered to be very worst year for the India and its economic conditions. And what will be the causes and consequences of this financial crisis? The following are the major causes of the financial crisis. One is strategic implementaries in financial markets. Assuming heavily, going with speculative tendencies, thinking that the prices will go up abnormally well, going ahead with the derivative trading, unable to meet the derivative contracts for settlement, then naturally the capital market tendencies have come to stand still with a lot of volatility that has given rise to the basic problem of financial crisis. Then leverages, particularly in the America, without looking at the basic finances, the people were going on employing a lot of debt funds in their own requirements. If debt funds really raised or used for capital formation, naturally there would have not been any problem. But the debt funds were raised on plastic money, which was just used for a variety of luxurious and entertainment purposes. When the people were unable to meet the debt obligations, the leverage effect has given rise to negative forces and the crisis has erupted in the economy. And there was asset liability mismatch. Always we do teach in finance for the MBA and MCOM students. Always there should be perfect match between the asset and uh, liabilities. If you have 100 rupees, try to spend 100 rupees. Do not spend 1,000 rupees thinking that you will get another 900 from somewhere else. It is promptly said that cut your coat according to cloth. If you are going on spending heavy amount without considering your income levels, naturally it is a leverage effect borrowing heavily without thinking our financial position and facing the crisis. Uncertainty and hard behavior. This is particularly observed in the capital market. Even in India, it is being felt that some people are buying some shares, everybody will be going on buying without looking at the fundamentals. Nowadays, after witnessing the case of the Satyam, we do not even believe the fundamentals. You know that when some of the people are asking, if we go ahead with the DNA test of the Ramaringa Raji, what you will find? One gentleman promptly said that the DNA test of Ramaringa Raji will be having so-and-so elements. One is IT industry plus real estate dealings plus embezzlement of accounts and cash. So what he has done for last seven to eight years, where he has shown that more than 7,100 crores were diverted for real estate dealings. It is really found through various reports, intelligence reports as well as uh, investigation reports are revealing that he has misused the corporate sector's funds, Satyam company's funds for real estate business. This was prominent, prominently identified for the last one and a half years, he has diverted the funds that has given rise to scam in the Satyam. It is crossing over 7,100 crores. Who are the losers? Losers are the investors and the employees and their clients. The clients have lost the confidence on Satyam. It is nothing but another financial crisis. It is also effect of the global phenomena. And the investors have heavily lost their investments. The share was quoting around 700 to the 800. Now its basic price is only 30 rupees, 40 rupees. And the employees do not know what will be their future. That's why the government of India has given rise to the occasion and offered the package to rescue the problems of the employees and the clientele. So far, it is considered to be one of the leading IT unit among the popular IT companies. It has gone down to rocks overnight because of mismanagement of one single individual. That's why always we must consider that what will be the uncertainties as well as what will be the hard mentalities. We have to think by ourselves what is the reality. 
we must not follow like sheep mentality one sheep follows the rest of the sheep will follow herd mentality is one where everybody will be following looking one after the other but a time has come that we have to decide and judge on our own account account whether it is the genuine one or not but in the corporate sector these things never be considered because people are very hurried to make money within no time so that has given rise to hard mentality of buying and selling and losing heavily particularly in the derivative trading and many people have lost heavily in one place in nalgonda district there is a halia it is a mandal headquarters when i gone through the press item i was really wondered they have invested more than 200 crores in satyam shares assuming that the shares will go up more than 2000 rupees or 5000 rupees like that when the value has gone down to 30 rupees and 40 rupees the total loss was estimated to 200 crores that is a mere small village a mandal headquarters this is called as a herd mentality and uh, there was a regulatory failures not only in india but everywhere the regulatory failures satyam was called as another enron in india the same auditors which were auditing the enron company at uh, america were the auditors of this company always we were thinking that the fundamental analysis and technical analysis will be highly useful to estimate the prices of various financial assets now nothing is real here everything is false we do not believe the financial statements even they were audited by the reputed auditors the auditors were by a bribe they were signing whatever the documents were shown the bank statements were falsified then whom we have to believe the where the common man will have to find the reality about the facts it is a question to be answered in this seminar where we will be discussing these issues at land and fraud fraudulent activities everywhere we have seen in india from arshad mehta a big scam that was accounting for more than 5000 crores ketan parik scam followed by it in 2001 that was ranging around 3000 crores then satyam it is 7100 meanwhile many many crashes have occurred which were purely man made with greed in their desire then contagion this is another phenomena if one problem is faced one sector in one country of the world that will be spread all over the world because our economies are totally exposed to the global global conditions global economy hence whatever reactions are felt in one country will be spread all over the world and hence we cannot escape from this contagion problem and another major problem is that recessionary tendencies all over the world and soon we will be entering into the depression etc d for delhi d stands for delhi whenever there are uh, whenever there is a global financial crisis the consequences will be four d's these are identified as economic downturn followed by banking crisis then government revenue drag it down to the lowest level and the deficit financing will be worsening deficit lead to debt crisis and the debt piles up rating downgrades and followed by bank runs and uh, default conditions so basically financial crises are protracted affairs which will be prolonged and asset market collapses are deep and prolonged there are proud profound decline in output and employment everywhere we'll find a retrenchment there are significant adverse consequences of financial crisis on government finances and what will be effect of these things on india we have to also consider our role and what will be its impact on india so the basically we'll examine the global meltdown the financial crisis impact on india from the different sectors one is the it bpo and kpo industries already the various sectors have declared the job cuts including airways airlines kpo bpo and it sectors every company has been declaring that 
job cuts to the extent of 500, 5000, 6000. Apart from this, the industry has been following a rigorous steps of num number of hours working have been increased and secondly, pay packages, pay prerequisites were required, uh, declined or uh, that is uh, decreased. And uh, particularly the top major IT companies like HCL, TCS, Wipro, Infosys, etc. got vastly hit because they used to have a lot of revenue from the banking sector, from global banking companies. When these banking companies went into liquidation, their major clients were terminated, contracts were terminated and income levels have been declined. So that's why many investors are expecting what will be the fourth quarter results and overall results of these companies. Then banks, it's a phenomena. One of the companies, banking companies, particularly the public sector companies are not vastly hit because they are very careful in India about their finances. But it is proudly said and identified that the ICICI bank, it has lost around $80 million dollars around 375 crores due to their uh, edging transactions and international monetary transactions. And it is also felt that uh, Axis Bank also lost some amount and therefore the global economic crisis and banking crisis has also spread to Indian banking sector, particularly the private sector banks, but not to the major extent to the uh, uh, public sector banks, but it is affecting the private sector banks. So the major problem is observed in the real estate sector. Lehman Brothers Real Estate Partners had given to 740 crores to Unit, uh, Unit Tech Limited. Its share was quoting around 1500 rupees. Now it has come down to 140 to 150 rupees. And many of the real estate projects were stopped in midway. The funding coming from overseas investors have stopped. And the projects are on our way through and many companies have stopped their proposals, etc. So therefore, there is a real estate depression. It has converted from boom to depression everywhere. It has been felt not only in Hyderabad, but in all metropolitan cities, etc. Then, what will be the solution? The solution is that government of India, all over the, not only the government of India, all over the world, the Central banks have given variety of packages. The American government has declared 700 billion package like that. Latin American countries, European countries have declared billions of package to overcome such problem, but still it is not yet uh, overcome. Finally, I would like to focus to the audience the following problems to be discussed and uh, come out with a valid conclusions so that we can be able to suggest some measures to the government of India, our policy makers, wherein our findings may be useful for them. The first question to be posed is, what is the real global financial crisis? Where it is originated? What are the clauses for global meltdown? And what are the consequences of global financial crisis? What will be its impact on developed and developing and uh, underdeveloped economies? What will be its consequences on Indian industry sectors such as IT, BPO, KPO, export-oriented industries? What will be measures for correction of global financial crisis apart from Indian financial crisis? Finally, I will conclude myself. An examination of all these aftermath survey financial crises shows deep and lasting effect on asset prices, output and employment, unemployment raises, and housing prices decline extended out to five to six years. We cannot feel happy, but uh, that 2008 or 2009 years are vastly hit. It will be extended further for two to four years. In the light of this, everybody must become pragmatic and positive. That's why, because cash is the king. Whomsoever holds the cash, it will become the king. Whatever we save that will be used wisely for future investments. Same is the case with that of the policymakers and the government. Hence, we cannot be in a hurry to invest, deploy, thinking that there is variety of news items and uh, grave system of news, etc. 
I thanks a lot for giving me this opportunity, and thanks a lot once again.